Hey, what's up? It's another episode of Watch You Strap, and these are not watch reviews. It's just a quick wristwatch check with a particular aftermarket uh, strap or bracelet pairing, uh, just to show off the combination. And uh, today I am back on the Glycine Airman Vintage, the Chief GL0475. If I got the reference correct in my head, uh, yeah, this is. Um, it's not new, but it's one of the later or newer uh, Chief, the Chief uh, dial variations. Um, but uh, yeah, they used to basically be black and the gunmetal color, the anthracite gray radiant dial with the, with the blue hands, which was probably my favorite for a while. And it's still one of my favorites, but I decided to change it up and I got this, ended up, after I sold that one, I ended up getting um, this white dial version with a black handset and uh, uh, yeah, kind of creamy uh, loom color here. Uh, if you want to call it Fotina, you may, but I just figure it's just a stylistic choice just to give something that offsets the um, the white of the, the pure white of the dial. So it's just not so monochromatic. It helps, I don't know, give it a little extra warmth and stands out, which I like. And uh, yeah, I think this is a pretty, I always thought this was a cool watch. Um, would be nice if they did make this in a slightly smaller size. This is a 40, but glycines do tend to wear about, oh, at least a millimeter or two larger, I would say, just because of how broad the the lugs are, you know? Um, yeah, so if you look at it, uh, it's practically almost a rectangular shape, uh, if not a bit of a torneau shape. Uh, when you look how sh wide and straight the uh, the uh, the lugs are, and then just it kind of just bulges out a bit with the the bezel, the the, the main case, right? Uh, but anyways, it, it just works on my seven inch wrist. It's maybe just a tad under six point nine, um, but. That watch is very thin, as most glycine airmen's, as well as combats are. Uh, but I think definitely the airmen's generally are wear thinner, quite thin for a GMT watch. And this is the purest version, which I always go with with glycine. It's just their original design that they went with uh, way back in what was it 1956 or 57 or is it the 53? <laughs> I'm getting uh, drawing a blank. It's in the mid 50s, but it was before um the rolex gmt master to be the first commercially available uh gmt watch with a rotating bezel and uh yeah and they did it in this 24-hour format which i like uh it's less busy and uh, again it's the original way they did it and i i kind of like the fact that it forces me and i'm not forced uh to do anything but it does give me a slightly different way of reading and referencing the time you know in relationship to what the hand positions are um you know like such as right now 16 just past 1615 going on 1616 this would be about 4 p.m right 4 16 p.m uh, pretty soon in just a couple of seconds here and uh yeah, it's just a different way of looking at it. And otherwise that hand would normally be down, I guess approximately where the eight is, right? Um, uh, in a normal 12 hour dial, uh, but yeah. And today I am going to, let's talk about the strap. This is a strap I've had for a while. Um, I don't get much opportunities to wear my 22 millimeter straps because I have a lot less watches out 22 millimeters than I did before. Uh, yeah, I think most of my 22s in the past probably were dominated by Seiko divers. Um, a lot of them tended to be in the 42 millimeter range, um, but then I sold a lot of them. And anyways, uh, I decided to pull this out and I just kind of put it up to this watch and I was like, you know what, this doesn't look too bad with this. Um, yeah, the yellow isn't exactly the yellowish color of the loom, but that's all right. You know, this is... Uh, basically a Marie National style of uh, strap, right? It's elastic. Um, although this is from Watch Dude, and this is their what is this? Their minimalist configuration. They have different ways. They custom basically built, made these to order, and when you spec it out, you can tell them how you want them to configure it. And the differences are how the 
the this fabric uh, you know uh, goes around the watch and secures around the wrist uh, the original way added several layers like up to I think basically three at least uh, on the bottom side of it the way it wraps around um, it looked cool but I felt it was a bit much and there was some other technical uh, not not exactly difficulties but some things about it that could risk scratching the lugs of the watch if you're not careful on how you secure the watch uh, and even remove it uh, the watch off of your wrist uh, when you're trying to unsecure it or secure the that particular design of uh, of their uh, the configuration for the for the build of the strap uh, which is their I don't know the classic or normal version I can't explain it. it's way too hard to describe it by words but I did a video on this a while back so if you're curious you can see otherwise check out the watch Stewart website and they will have videos and like uh inf more information on the different ways you can configure it but this is their minimalist which basically there's no pass through and the original version doesn't go under either it just wraps around but this does negate uh what you would normally have with a nato strap which you know it's a redundant system it's basically a loop a complete loop around your wrist and then the spring bars are secured uh, around that and so if you had a, basically if you had a spring bar failure with a normal typical NATO style strap um, you still have at least one set usually both of them going out will be very rare but uh, you at least have one to secure the watch still to the strap uh, being the way this is designed it just loops through here and on this side actually there's like a, a fold over piece that prevents it from slipping out it's just actually uh, you kind of see it there it just ends right there but it won't ever come through the the uh, this area here because it's the way it's folded it's just way too wide and it'll just it'll hold on the side you know no problem but basically you end up uh, securing this much like a two-piece strap so even if you have one spring bar failure the the whole you know system is it's not a closed loop around your wrist so it'll open up and the watch will fall off but whatever knock on wood i never had that happen before and uh hopefully it never will pretty easy on my watches anyways and uh i just go for this for a particular look in the way it it secures on it doesn't add that extra layer even though it's probably just going to be a single layer which i usually go with uh a single pass uh a nato style strap um even re removing that we we'll just keep that watch that much closer um yeah so uh yeah so i think this works really nice the military kind of olive khaki green whatever you want to call this green color with the kind of the classic yellow somewhat bright yellow stripe running down is very marine ash now that's very military-esque in my opinion and i think the glycine does have a very uh, military vibe to it especially since it has a 24-hour dial and it was a favorite uh, watch to be ordered during the Vietnam War era through their local PX postal exchange, uh, which basically allows them to order things uh, in at the base, at the bases that they're stationed at or nearby, I suppose, and uh, get stuff like glycine, Seikos, Rolexes back in the day. I don't know about now. I'm sure you can still order certain things, but uh, maybe the catalog of available items to be ordered through them would be uh, uh, different, if, if not uh, less. Uh, but yeah, so I think this works, you know. it's The watch itself is just a very neutral palette anyways. It's just simple, basically white and black. And I think in general, any just about any military-style strap and color, such as a khaki green, grays, or a or like a tan, you know, sand color, khaki color of that sort. Pretty much works on any watch as well, in my opinion. So that's about it. So um, thanks for watching. Uh, yeah, it just hooks on right here. Very easy to secure, um, comfortable. And yeah, you can, you, you just tell them what size your wrist is and they'll basically have it made and it is adjustable and uh there's quite a number of options um i encourage you to check them out um and the prices are fair you know they're about 25 maybe now 27 or 28 dollars but um uh, yeah i think they're totally worth it and uh, they've had more options since i've ordered it quite a while a number of years ago but 
uh, if I did, I would probably just remove the, the branding here. You can have it just, uh, you know, plain and un, unbranded. And uh, I think you can get different finishes as well. Um, yeah, similar to Erica's original, like you can do a lot of custom configurations and, and when you order it and they, they are or, or ordered to, made to order and uh, and to size, as close to your wrist size so, as possible. But uh, they, Erica's is quite a bit more expensive. Looking at roughly average 80 bucks for the most basic, uh, but you do have a, much more options with uh, Erica's, I would say, and their quality, her quality is generally very good too. Um, but yeah, um, that's the watch steward and, uh, that's it. Thanks for watching and, uh, enjoy your watches.